All right, if you would open your Bibles to Psalm 106. Psalm 106. Also, uh, if you want to turn to Numbers 13 and 14. Uh, we will be reading uh, both chapters of Numbers 13 and 14 a little bit later. I know it's going to be lengthy, but we're, uh, I hope we all can stay focused and stay engaged because uh, it's something we need. It's just uh, rehearsing maybe some things that you've read in the past or maybe even studied in the past and been preaching in the past. But Psalm 106, once you've found your place there, I invite you to stand as we honor God with the reading of his words. Psalm 106. Verse number 24. Psalm 106 and verse number 24. Therefore, he said that he would destroy them. And had not Moses his chosen stood before him in the breach to, or um, that's 23, 24. See what I'm talking about, my dirty glasses? 24. Yea, they, dis, uh, they dispersed uh, the pleasant land, and they believed not his word, but murmured in their tents and hearkened not unto the voice of the Lord. Therefore he lifted up his hand against them to overthrow them in the wilderness, to overthrow their seed also among the nations, and to scatter them in the lands. Let's pray. Father, as we are to the preaching and teaching part of the service, Father, I ask once again that you would empty me of myself. Father, that you would cleanse me of my sin, and that you would fill me with thine Holy Spirit, that I may preach thus, saith the word of the Lord. Father, tonight as we discuss these psalms and also what we're going to read in Numbers 13 and 14, Father, I ask that you would help us to be focused and engaged. Father, that you, we would not allow anything to buy for our time or we would not allow Satan to distract us from your word and the message or the preaching from your word or it is... Uh, tonight, we continue to study this psalm. Lord, I ask that the Spirit would convict us of sin, or that he would be able to flow into every heart, into every mind. Lord, convicting us and teaching us. Father, I ask that you would commune with us tonight. Lord, I ask you to do these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. May God bless the reading of his word. It's fitting that we saying trust and obey this morning this evening because we're going to be speaking tonight on the sin of unbelief the sin of unbelief because the psalmist is referring again to the children of israel in the wilderness now everything we're dealing with in this psalm has to deal with the children of uh, of israel and their sin and we've dealt with three different sins besides this one in the wilderness, leaving Egypt and going into the wilderness and on their way to the promised land. Well, today we're discussing Israel when they, had, when they committed the sin of unbelief and in going into the promised land. So uh, let's turn to uh, Numbers 13. Numbers 13. And uh, we're going to read that. I'm going to do my best to try to not skip, uh, you know, some words and things of that nature, but I do have a new Bible coming. And so uh, let's look at Numbers 13. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Did you see that? We've read this before. Right? Who, spo- who is speaking to them? To the children of Israel here. God is, right? Let's continue. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. And Moses 
by the commandment of the Lord sent them from the wilderness of Paran, and all those men were heads of the children of Israel. And these were the names, and if you read verses uh, 4 through seven or 16, you will see all the names of the rulers, okay? Verse uh, 16, these are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land, and Moses called uh, Oshi the land, uh, and Moses called out Oshi, the son of uh, Nun, uh, Joshua, and Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Get you up this way southward and go up into the mountains, or mountain, and see that the land, what it is, and the people that dwelleth therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many, and what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds, and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood uh, therein or not, and be ye of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness, and Zen and uh, Rehob, and as men come to Hamath, and they ascended by the south, and came unto Hebron, where uh, uh, Amon the uh, the Shishai and were uh, uh, Shishai and Talmai and the children of uh, Anak were. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt, and they came unto the brook of the of Eshcol and cut uh, down from thence a branch which one cluster of grapes. And they bear it between the two upon a staff, and they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. And the place was called the brook of Eshcol because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. And they returned from searching uh, of the land after forty days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron. And to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh, and brought back word unto them, and uh, unto all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him, and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest, and sh uh, surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong, uh, people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walked, are walled, and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, and or the Amalekites dwell in the land, and of the south, and of the Hittites, and of the Jebusites, and, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell uh, by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses, and said, let us go up at once, right? And possess it. This is Caleb and Joshua, the two good spies, right, or, that we're talking about here. But the men that went up against the people, for they are stronger than we, and they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched, and the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that... Uh, eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come uh, of the uh, sight of the grasshopper, come of the giants, and we in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so were in their sight. Now, verse in chapter 14. And in the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. The people wept that night. So remember, these ten spies that were bad, they swayed the people. To Joshua and Caleb came back and said, let's go. We can take it. We can take the people. And that's the report that Caleb and Joshua gave. Now, in the other ten persuaded the people. In verse 14, it says here, And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, 
And the people wept at night, and all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, Would to God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God, or would God ha we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were, uh, were it not better for us to return into Egypt? So they're mourning. Remember, we read this in Psalm 106 that the, that the psalmist is recounting this. And so uh, they go back to, what did they say? We ought to go back to Egypt where we were enslaved, right? That's what they're saying. And so let's continue. And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. These, then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before the, all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephna, uh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes, and they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is exceedingly good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into the land and give it to us, give it us a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only, only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. But the congregation uh, bade stone them with stones, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. So we have the report of the ten. They swayed all the people. Caleb and Joshua said, "We're going. Listen, let's not rebel against God. He's the, now who gave them this land." Okay, God has told them, I'm giving you this land from me to you. Joshua and Caleb, let's go. The other ten, Ugh, I, no, we ought not to. All right, and so now look at this. The Lord is about to speak. He's about to do some business. Mind you, when we... When we lack acting, God steps up his acting, okay? Look at this, verse 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me, and how long will it be ere they believe me? How long will it take for them to believe me? That's what he's asking. How long will it take that this people believe me what I say? That's, that's a harsh statement coming from, Lord, from God to Israel, the children of Israel. All right, let's, let's look. I will smite them with, a, with pestilence and dis, uh, disinherit them and will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. So, of course, we, we talked about last week, last Wednesday, that the Lord wanted to start over with Moses again, right? And then, then the Lord repented and said, I'm not going to do that, and so... Uh, well, here it is again. He's ready to start. The Lord's like, I'm going to start over again. And, of course, Moses says exactly what he said before. And Moses said unto the Lord, Then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou broughtest up his people in the might of, uh, from among them, and they will tell it to the habitations of the land, for they have heard that thou thou, Lord, art among this people, and that thou, Lord, art uh, are seen face to face, and that they, the cloud standeth over them, and that thou goest before them by daytime in a pillar of a cloud and, and a pillar of fire by night. Now if thou shalt kill all this people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, Because of the Lord was not able to bring his uh, this people into the land which he sware unto them, Therefore he hath slain them in the wilderness. And now I beseech thee, let the power of my Lord be great, according to thou, according as thou hast spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering 
and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgressions, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people according unto the greatness of thy mercy, and as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have tempted me now these uh, ten times and have not hearkened unto my voice surely they shall not see the land which i swear unto their fathers neither shall any of them that provoked me see it but my servant caleb look at this but my servant caleb because he had another spirit with him and hath followed me fully him will i bring into the land whereunto he went and his seed shall possess it. Now the uh, Amalekites and the Canaanites dwell in the, in the valley. Tomorrow turn you and get ye into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel which they murmur against me. Say unto them as I tr as Truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me. Doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which I have swear to make you dwell therein, save Caleb the son of uh, Jephthah and Joshua the son of Nun. But your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall, uh, shall know the land by which ye have despised. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in the wilderness. This is some strong language from God. Because I know it's long, but it's important that we go through this as we discuss their sin of unbelief, right? And so, uh, uh, at, uh, at verse 35, I, I, the Lord, have said it. I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me in the wilderness. They shall be consumed, and, there sh and they shall die. And the men which Moses sent up to search the land, uh, who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up the slander upon the land, even those men, look at this, that did bring up the evil report on, upon the land, died by the plague before the Lord. <whistles> Let's look again. 38. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephna, which were in, uh, which were of the men that went to search the land, lived still. And Moses told these sayings unto all the people of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. Really? So they, mourned, they murmured against God about the land that he said he was giving them because of what these ten men said. And now that they're going to be punished and have consequences because they're disobeying God by not going to the land, now they're mourning. They almost have a sense of repentance, right? Let's, let's, let's continue, right? And they rose up early in the morning and got them up into the top of the mountain saying, Lo, we be here, and we will go up uh, unto the place which the Lord hath promised, for we have sinned. God, they woke, it's almost like they, they, were, they were troubled all night. It says they mourned all night, right? Then they go in the morning, they raise up early. They go to where God said to send them, we're here, we're going to take it. God said, you've sinned. Let's continue. We're almost done with the reading, Right? 
And Moses said, Whereunto now, Wherefore now do ye transgress the commandment of the Lord, but it shall not prosper. So he said, Go take the land. You chose not to take the land. You've woken up, you want to take the land, but God has already said, no, you're not going to take the land because you disobeyed. You're to go to by, to the, into the wilderness by the Red Sea. Now you want to disobey me again by trying to take the land. That's what he's saying, right? Go not up, for the Lord is not among you, that ye be not smitten before your enemies. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and ye shall fall by the sword, because ye were turned away from the Lord. Therefore, the Lord will not be with you. But they presumed to go up in, uh, unto the uh, hilltop. Nevertheless, the Ark of the Covenant and the Lord and, Mo and Moses departed not out of the camp. The Amalekites came down, and the Canaanites which dwell in that hill smote them and discomforted them even unto Horeb. So for all that reading, to remind us what the psalmist is talking about. Now go back to Psalm 106. 106. Remember what he said in 106 verse 6. We have sinned with our fathers. We keep repeating this, right? The psalmist says, we have sinned these same sins that our fathers have sinned. So the, the sin of unbelief being the title, the children of Israel were faithless. The children of Israel that God led out of Egypt with all the miracles and all the plagues that he sent Egypt. And the miracles of the cloud, uh, the cloud of the, uh, the cloud of fire by night, and the uh, 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 the pillar of fire by night, and the pillar of cloud by day, leading them the way, and they get to the land that God has given them to, and they disobey God. They're faithless. They say we can't take it. These ten men that the spies, God told them to send the twelve spies, right? Do you know Israel kind of suggested that beforehand, and God took them up on their suggestion, and so. Uh, he, he said, uh, 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 he sends them, uh, God tells Moses, Moses sends them, the ten spies, ten spies were bad, two were good. Remember the song? And so, they were faithless. They consistently, they consistently disobeyed God. Did they not? The children of Israel consistently disobeyed God. In all fronts of their faith, they continually tested God. And God kept saying, how long? How long? God himself told them this land was theirs from him. Beloved, if God tells us something, it's the truth. It's going to happen because his promises are sure. He tells them that this land is theirs from him. Right? It's his word. They simply did not believe what God had said. If you look in, in, in if you go back to X, uh, Numbers 13, you will see in verses number 1 and 2 where... Uh, God told them to get the leaders, all the leaders of the tribes, the rulers, the leaders, to go out and do this. So these ten spies that were bad, too, were good. They were leaders. They were leadership in the camp. All those leaders who doubted God, those ten, who doubted God's word, died by plagues sent by God. See, Joshua, do you remember Joshua 24, 15? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, right? Joshua has learned, by the time we get to Joshua 24, he has learned from the children of Israel what not to do. See, 
these other ten leaders, rulers of the camp, they were faithless. But Joshua, uh, Joshua, Caleb, Moses, they, they trusted God. They took God at his word. So, a lot of Christians have Joshua 24, 15 in their house on a plaque. Some of it, as soon as you come into the front door, you'll see it. Maybe in the living room on a, on a picture frame or hung up on the wall. I will tell you this, if you're going to say that, you better do it. Is God still the God of the Old Testament? I am the Lord, I change not. So just, before I get more into this, just because we're in the dispensation or the age of grace, don't think that he's not going to punish you like he did the children of Israel. So they were faithless. And a lot of their leaders were faithless. Children of Israel were faithless. Number two, the children of Israel constantly tested their faith. They tested God and they tested their faith. There are always tests, were there not? Whether they would believe God, these tests were allowed by God. We can go to James, where he, he tells us to be glad over the he, James uses the word tribulation, uh, temptation, which means trials, right? Listen, there's always going to be tests. Israel consistently had these tests, whether they would believe God or not. And that doesn't change for us. There will always be trials in our walk with God, and those in their allowed by God. Of course, he knows whether we're going to fail or pass, but he still allows them to come in to whether we're going to trust him at his word or not. As in all tests, some excel. Out of the 12 leaders, two excelled, 10 were exposed. All tests come, some excel, and were approved, Caleb, Joshua, right? While others were exposed and lacked faith, suffered. See, tests will either, we will either excel in the tests by, by trusting God, or we will be exposed in those tests by unbelief. Hello? Hello? Not by, what I mean by unbelief? By not trusting God. God, al God allows tests to come our way from God to test our faith just as he did the, the children of Israel. And these tests come to reveal whether or not we believe God's word. As James says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. They are going to reveal Test reveals faith, or the lack thereof. We know, all, well, listen, there are several folks in here and that attend this church that have gone through some major, major tests. And a lot of them, those tests were indirectly, not, not because they did something. Hello? Hello? Not because they did something. These tests weren't because they disobeyed God. But God allowed these tests to reveal their faith. Why do you, folks, he, he's going to do this to reveal your faith to others. Not only to strengthen your walk with him, but to reveal your faith to others who are watching you. That's why Moses said, God... You, if you kill them, these other people who are watching, 
folks, we're, we, we live in glass houses. And so he's saying, God gives us these tests to reveal our faith. And number three, the children of Israel, the, the children of Israel's door was shut by God. If you go back, let's turn back to 14, 25 real quick. Numbers chapter 14, look at verse number 25. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwell in the valley. Tomorrow turn you, here's a command from God, get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, right? God, shut the door. Said, you're going this way. Because you disobeyed me, because you lacked faith, because you didn't take me at my word, I am closing the door. That's what he did. They were not going in, so God closed the door and said, you're going the other way. They tried going in after God pronounced the judgment have you ever tried to go into a door that God, God shut God might let you go in but you're going to be met with judgment hello God let them go in he said don't go I've shut the door Moses says, told them, don't go. God is not with you anymore. Don't go. Because remember the, 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 these ten trials were like, we're here. Let's go. Moses said, don't do it. Do not do it. God's not with you anymore. Listen, you can go in these doors that God has shut. But you will find nothing but disappointment. Nothing but disappointment. God closed the door, and they all died that went in. When they refused to act, God took action. There's always repercussions. For disobedience. There is always. Repercussions. For disobedience. Let me help you out. It doesn't matter. How large. Or small the disobedience. There's always. Repercussions. One piece of fruit. One piece of fruit. Think, uh, we discussed this Sunday night. I'm going to keep bringing this up until we get it. One piece of fruit invoked God's wrath. The repercussions, they get kicked out, and now Eve has, Eve has to have pain and childbirth. Invoked God's wrath, and now it drove mankind into deprivation, right? It, it just whew. one piece. They disobeyed. They their lack of action made God take action, and it was immediately, immediately when we disobey. God immediately takes action. There will be a recompense for that disobedience. Witness, I have. I can claim that. I've seen it. And the very first thing is no more fellowship until you get it right. Hello? There's always going to be a recompense for disobedience. Obedience must be the outcome of God's commandments. Right? It doesn't matter whether you agree with it or not. 
It doesn't matter whether you think you can do it or not. It doesn't matter how big or how small it may seem. Whether I can do it, whether you can do it or not, is irrelevant. Obedience must be the outcome. When we refuse to act in obedience, God takes action. See the thing about obedience? Obedience is greeted with blessings from God's promises. And disobedience is greeted with consequences. The sin of unbelief. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. Well, you're not taking God at his word in his, word in his, in his commandments to you, to, right? That is still unbelief. God can't do it. God can't do it. I know he tells me that I'm supposed to do this, but does he not see what goes on in my life? Obedience must be the outcome. doesn't matter what it is. All other sins begin with the sin of unbelief. All these other sins that we've discussed, rebellion, discontentment, idolatry, all stem from unbelief. God always keeps his promises, folks. And those promises come with blessings or consequences. God always shows his faithfulness too. Right? God always shows his faithfulness. God is always good. But see what happens when we refuse to act, when we refuse to be obedient, God takes action. And the consequences begin. And when the consequences begin, grumbling and despisement occurs. They despised Moses and Aaron. Let's get a new captain. Take us back to Egypt. This always happens when sin is in the camp. When you allow sin in the camp and you never get right with God and with those that you've sinned against, maybe, you will begin to murmur, grumble. I can't believe, I, I don't agree with so, what, what that person said. I don't agree with it. That hurt my feelings. Then it comes to, well, God, well, I mean, then it comes to murmuring against God. Well, God, why, 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 why did you allow this to happen? Yeah. Sin, unrepentant sin turns into murmurings and grumblings, then despisement. There are folks who don't want to go to church anymore because they despise those that are in church. Not because of what they did, but because they refuse to acknowledge their sin with God and they refuse to repent. That is, that's true. 100% truth. How do I know it? I see it. I see unrepentant sin in a person. I see murmuring and grumblings happening, then despisement. And before long, bitterness and anger. Folks, 
God demands obedience. His obedience is for our good and it's for his glory. Amen? God wanted to do so much with Israel by going into the land. But because they disobeyed God, all of those from 20 years old on up that murmured, gone. Except for those who trusted God in his word. Father, as